Welcome back, fellow card borrowers. Today I am here with a friend who brought his Mogus God of Slaughter deck, which I have played against a couple of times and also lost against a couple of times. And we just wanted to show this to the channel so you can have some inspiration how to build your own or just look in the description for the deck list if you're just interested in that. Um, but we're here also to discuss why certain cards are in here, what his thoughts were, why he put them in here, and let's get started. And it's time for another installment of Think Outside the Deck Box. We sorted the deck into different piles. So this is a ramp pile. We got a card draw pile, we got a big removal pile, as well as a damage or rest of the deck pile and some lands. We got the commander here. So first of all, let's look at the unique commander here. This is Mogus, God of Slaughter. He costs four Rakdos and two colorless. He's a legendary enchantment creature god, 7-5 indestructible. And as long as your devotion to black and red is less than seven, he isn't a creature. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, they get dealt two damage unless they sacrifice a creature. And this is really important. This is not loss of life, but damage. And this deck revolves heavily around uh, dealing damage as well as a few life loss cards. But the key to this deck is dealing damage to everyone around and also sometimes dealing damage to yourself to make it a little more fair. So, shall we dig into the land pile? I would call it a ramp pile. Sure, yeah, yeah, the ramp pile, not the land. The lands are here. So, we got the standard ramp artifacts. We got a soaring here, uh, a mind stone. I think I should hold it a little closer. We got the arcane signet here, uh, a talisman, a signet. Felwar Stone, we got a Chromox, very nice, and we got a Ragavan here. So why did you include, include Ragavan in here? Uh, it's one of the few drops in my deck that comes out very early. Uh, he comes out very surprising. Um, with the dash ability, mm -hmm. he creates a treasure token, and sometimes I get a good card from my opponents, but the playing from Exile is not a theme in my deck, so we usually use him as a mana dog of sorts to just get in, get a treasure token, save that mana up for later. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And and Rakdos also has problems ramping in general if you get your artifacts destroyed. Yeah. You hopefully can keep your Ragavan and get some treasures off of him. And we got more treasures here with Darkside Extortionist, sure. Very nice inclusion. Jessica's will. Yeah, you could make an argument for Jeskai's Will as, uh, in a draw pile as well, mm -hmm. um, because we keep our commander on the board all my, almost all the time at turn 3 or 4. Um, it's not important that my commander is a creature or not. Uh, this Jeskai's Will triggers, triggers uh, when uh, we control a commander. So we get not only sometimes between 5 and 7 mana, in red, but we also can play the top three cards of our library. And most of the time you hit at least two cards that you can use and maybe one land. Yeah. And you can play them. And you can even play the land. You can you play the land. Yeah. land. Sometimes it feels awkward because we are a two color deck. Uh, you only get red mana. Uh, that if you hit something that has too many black mana symbols in its cost, uh, you have to keep it in exile. That feels bad. So keep in mind, play it and have some treasures open or have some swamps open. Some black mana open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe only spend red mana and keep your black of mana course, open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we got this card. This is also a favorite of mine. This is a wonderful card to send into Avernus. Um, this card really accelerates the game. So at the beginning of your own upkeep, you put two counters on this card and then each player creates X tokens and gets dealt X damage equal to the amount of um, counters that are on this card. So first rotation you put two 
counters on it, and everyone gets two treasures and dealt two damage, then four, then six, then eight, and so on. And this card can get out of hand really fast. And I, I just love this card, and it just accelerates the game. Everyone can participate in the game, even the Mana Screwed people. And uh, they all of us get just dealt damage, which is fine, because uh, Mogus also deals damage to our opponents, so we hopefully come out on top. Yes, this is also one of my favorites in the deck. Um, it fulfills our plan with our deck, which is to get our opponent's life totals to zero. Um, but as you said, it's a fair card. Everyone gets treasure. So in a sense, it's a group hack card. Yeah. Uh, you could play them in group hack decks. Uh, this deck is not a group hack deck, but it also harmonizes very well with our damage doubling cards. So uh, it makes the game even faster because one thing I hate is too long commander games. Uh, if a commander game goes beyond one hour, I tend to get bored. <laughs> Anything else you wanted to add uh, no. about the ramp pile? Okay, so let's continue with the card draw. We've got some standard card draw here with the Knight's Whisper. Let's just go through those till we hit something um, out of the ordinary. Read the bones. we got the Stormfist Crusader, which is Kind of group huggy as well, because everyone gets to draw cards and loses one life. This is a life loss. That's not a damage card, though. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> one it of would the be, few ones. Yeah, it would be better if it was damage. Yeah, it would fit more to the theme. But um, we tend to struggle with card draw in in Raktos, uh, colors. Um, but we will see what else we get. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Erebos. Also, you pay life, you draw cards, and your opponents can't gain life, which is important. Because one of the weaknesses of this deck is decks that get a ton of life, right? So you deal a bunch of damage every turn, but if they if their life gain is stronger, yeah, then the deck is struggling. And cards like this, I think you have like two or three cards that prevent yes. gaining life. So that's important. And also he's indestructible. Very useful. Creative technique, one of the one of my favorite cards, also with the demonstrate and uh, um, with the demonstrate ability. So when you cast this, your opponent can copy it, and then you get twice this effect of shuffling the deck, revealing the top cards until you reveal a non-land card. So you can never whiff, and you get to cast it right, yeah, without paying any mana costs. And your opponent gets to do that once, and then you get to do it twice, which is really a really nice thing when you hit something else when, than a ramp stone, obviously, but uh, the deck has a bunch of enchantments that just stick around and just want to be played for, for free. And it's also a good commander card because uh, our casual games tend to have maybe one player who is weaker in the current game state and players who are more ahead. And not only are you helping yourself, maybe you can help one of your allies, maybe you can get a favorable trade out of uh, this deal, um, or you play it very smartly because, ah, I know this is a blue deck, he will hit a counter spell, which doesn't do that mm -hmm. much then. So yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a nice inclusion. Uh, it's arguably not a card draw card in, in a stricter sense, but I like it for the flavor. Yeah. I mean, you get yeah value out of your deck, and it's very versatile. So yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. We got the Colossus here, uh, which allows you allows an opponent to choose between the top three cards. Either you draw them, or they get dealt damage equal to the mana costs of the top three card, and then you put them into the graveyard. I think uh, you don't know what what the mana value average is of your deck. Uh, I don't know it for sure, but I would guess that it is uh, between three and four. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe because of the mana rocks, maybe even just about three. Um, but this, well, uh, this card also synergizes with uh, cards that double damage. Mm -hmm. um, it synergizes with the deck as well, because if you play that card, your opponent is hopefully, or one of your opponents is hopefully on a uh, not so favorable life total for them. Uh, also, you can use this, use it politically if someone is very ahead and you say, ah, oh, let me draw the free cards, maybe I'll draw a board removal yeah. or spot removal. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, in regards to the uh, average mana value of your deck in the description, there's the deck list and probably the uh, website will tell you what the average amount of mana value is in this deck. But yeah, with the, with the damage doubler. This does a ton of damage, and normally you draw the three cards, right? Yeah, sure. You you guess that one of the cards will be a land because of the average distribution, yeah. and the other two will be damage. hopefully more damage. Hopefully, yeah. Actually, you hope that you get to draw the cards. Yeah. <laughs> the arcs I don't see often in decks. Why did you did you include that? He resets your hand if you're low or if the hands are not useful. That is correct. Um, our main draw will be wheels or wheel type effects. Mm -hmm. we're, so our, we're getting to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So our graveyard should be very full, uh, so we can use it twice. Um, we don't use it for the body, we don't use it as a creature. I guess we can use it for the devotion, although you could argue if, if it's good or not good that Mogus is a creature or not. Um, he would be easier to remove if he was. So yeah, you can wheel two times. Of course, you only get three cards, but that is usually enough. Yeah, very nice. And here are the wheels. We are starting with the Ruin Grinder. I don't actually play this one, and I should play it in decks, because I do like it, the ability for people to choose if they want to discard their hand and draw seven. And in the early game, you can even cycle him if you if you're really desperate, I like it. And then we got this card. Uh, I forgot the English name, but I will show it on screen as always. Uh, so it has Miracle. If you draw it at the beginning, if, if, it, if it is the first card you draw, um, you can show it and cast it for two mana instead of five, and then everyone resets their hand. And this one also is a wheel. You tap him and everyone resets their hand. And we got the original Wheel of Fortune here, which lets everyone reset their hand. Got the Wheel of Misfortune as well. So like we have five wheels in here. So a lot of resetters for filling our graveyard, but also you could use them politically. Anything else? <laughs> no, um, I made the conscious decision to uh, not play with my exile that much, uh, which is also a very red thing to do for card draw, to just exile the top cards and play them. Um, would also fit the Raktas theme, there are many cards that harmonize with it. Uh, it was just a, an idea how to draw cards, how to get card advantage in, in Raktas colors, and I chose wheels for this deck. Yeah. And this is also a fun mini game. This explaining is this every time you cast it, how it's yeah. used. But it's it has a it has a double uh, upside. Not only is it a wheel for me, but it also harmonizes with double damage. Yes, it deals damage. It wow. deals damage. This is not pain life yeah. or betting life. Uh, it's actually taking that much damage. At least one person does. Yeah. Nice. We got the protection racket here. Another one of my favorites. Does this deal damage? This one is paying life. Yes. Okay. So at the beginning of your upkeep, for each player, reveal the top card and they choose if they want to pay the life equal to the mana costs and just exile it, or if you take it into your hand. And you can also use this politically. If you're really mana screwed, you can ask the, the other players to not pay zero for mana, for example, or mana rocks. Um, but also you could ask if there's a board wipe and one of the players who's on your side would that they don't pay the life so that you can wipe the board or other cases that make this card really yeah. politically. It's, it's interesting. I was um, very much not a fan of this card when it was printed and took it even out of the pre-con that it was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I saw it when you played it, uh, how much fun it can be to, to ask the people. And in the worst case, you exile the top three cards of your library and you get your draw step anyway, so it, it will never hurt you. Yeah. And I think this card is maybe dangerous to play in combo decks, where it can happen that you hit a combo piece and one player just pays the life if, if you reveal it to a player who's not on your side and your combo piece is gone. But in decks that just generally want to 
play their cards and you don't you're not dependent on them um i would play that in every every black deck and i think i'm playing it in my raktos traps deck that's the first one i i played it in and this also just wants to play the cards and there are a whole bunch of cards that are expensive when you're finished with this video you should watch that video next another raktos deck which is a ton of fun underworld breach this is like a Yagmoth's Will in red, right? Like you can cast the spells from a graveyard this turn and you exile three more cards for every card you want to you want to cast. And with all the wheels in here, your graveyard will always be filled and you can if you cast it you can always use reuse the cards you're, uh, you you want to play. You could even recast the wheel filling up your graveyard again for three mana yeah this is a very yeah. common combo with lion's eye diamond uh, wheel of fortune and underworld breach mm -hmm. uh, which uh, just lets you uh, get rid of your deck and then play in tassa's oracle and this is very fun if you play against <laughs> it <clears throat> no uh, this is just like having an extra hand right you um at some point in the game you can drop this and play your graveyard again it's super fun. It's card advantage. Yeah, very nice. And we are playing two tutors here, the Vampiric one and the Demonic. I don't think there's much to say about them. Just get the best card for the situation onto your deck or into your hand. If you want to make it even stronger, put more tutors in, I guess, to focus on the strongest cards, maybe. Yeah, those are yeah. also the cards. If I would replace cards those would be on the top of my list. You don't need two turns in this deck because you don't have combo pieces. Uh, this is most of the times I'm searching for lands or mana rocks with a <laughs> demonic tutor. And uh, obviously you want to find answers for threats on the board. Yeah. So maybe we could even argue that these are ramp cards kind <laughs> of or fixed in your hand. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's continue with the removal pile, which is a big pile here. And I think many of them also deal damage. We'll see about that. We are playing the Chaos Warp here, the Vandal Blast to get rid of artifacts, the Ubulet, Obulet, I don't know how it's pronounced, to get rid of a card permanently until it leaves the battlefield. Which is interesting because it phases the permanent, the creature, it is not a permanent, yeah, it uh -huh. is specifically a yeah. creature, it phases the creature out. It's one of the best removals we have in Commander for dealing with enemy commanders. Because they are not able to take them to the command zone, which they would be able to if you would play an true. Oblivion Ring, for example. Yeah. Uh, so I think this should be in included in many more black decks, and I see it far too few. Okay. Wild Magic Surge is a card that destroys any permanent, and they reveal cards until they reveal a card with the same permanent type. So if you remove an artifact creature, either creature or artifact is cast when you reveal the, the cards, right? Yes, yeah. necessary print, a very good removal in red, uh, much needed, love that card. Yeah. Tibble's Trickery, the same, great counter spell, it just hard counters a spell and the rest you can read if you don't know the card, uh, but I love this card and I'm playing it in my red Dandan deck as well, but also in my red commander decks. Just being able to counter, hard counter something is wonderful. Yes, it's mostly you want to replace a big threat with hopefully a minor threat and there is the uh, chaos theme from red. Uh, you don't know what you are getting. So if you're unlucky, you're countering a smothering type and your opponent gets an uh, omniscience and you're feeling very bad. Yeah, yeah. No, God! No, God, please, no, 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 no! Deadly Relic, okay, and Deflecting Swat, great reprints, wonderful cards in here. This one we also talked on the channel about, the Delayed Blast Fireball, which you normally foretell and at instant speed are able to remove your opponent's board and deal five damage to each uh, opponent and when you have damage doublers in here you deal 10 damage to each creature and to each opponent and this is arguably a cyclonic rift in red in my eyes 
I wouldn't go that far because it only <laughs> deals with creatures. It doesn't deal with enchantments and mm-hmm. artifacts. But it is a very good card, especially in decks that play more with the mechanic of playing from exile, which this deck doesn't do, mm-hmm. uh, because it only requires to be cast from exile to do more damage. Yeah, so good card in in many many decks, but exile decks would love it even more. Mm-hmm. True, true. Planet Chaos, wonderful chaotic card. At the beginning of your upkeep, you have to flip a coin. If you lose, you sacrifice it. And each spell is countered 50% of the time. And so often this also hit yourself. You hit yourself with it. Um, And it was just so much fun. But sometimes people just don't play their cards because it's way too important to get them through. And at some point, they just have to take the risk and flip the coin. Yes, this is a very slow deck. We want to accelerate the game to finish it early, but the deck itself is, is not very fast. You don't hit people out of the game in turn three or four. So this card helps with at least one turn rotation where everyone is playing very cautiously, is not being very aggressive. I would not recommend playing this one when your enemies have a full board of creatures, uh, because creatures are king when this uh, card is on the board, but directly after an, an board wipe, This card is uh, very fun to delay the game. Very nice. I like it too. I like it a lot. Ether Flash, I think it's in English. This one is, I think, quite underplayed in decks that don't play creatures. Uh, For four mana, it's an enchantment that deals two damage to each creature that enters the battlefield. And with damage doublers and triplers, maybe. I I think it's just damage doublers in here, right? Um, The... The card even deals more damage to creatures entering the battlefield. Uh, This can even... It can lock out some players um, because their commander maybe only has two toughness. Yes, that's what I wanted to say, actually. Yeah, thank you. Very nice. Last laugh. That's a brutal board wipe and can kill players as well. So if you don't know this card for four mana, it's enchantment. And whenever a different permanent except for Last Laugh, leaves the battlefield to the graveyard, or is dying. Um, Last Laugh deals one damage to each creature and each player. And if no creature is in play anymore, you have to sacrifice Last Laugh. Uh, Which is quite funny if Mogus is a creature, Mm -hmm. because he will never die to any damage. And then this card never leaves until Um, Mogus is no longer a creature or removed. Yeah, This is one of the cards that is actually able to make a game a draw. Because if, <laughs> if the board is huge enough, um, everyone dies. Everyone on the table dies yeah. if the life totals are low enough. Uh, but I will have the last laugh because uh, I finished the game with my card. Yeah, yeah. And also, this is quite a snowball effect. As soon as one creature dies, normally the whole board is wiped with this one, right? This deals so much damage with one with one death of a creature. It and doesn't with... even have to be a creature, it can just be a treasure yeah. token. Interesting. Yeah, that is true, that is true. And we all have we, we have treasures in this deck with the Avernus, for example. We all have treasures, and then you kind of disable the treasures or give it give the option to each player of when do you want to wipe the board, which is very nice. I like it. No Mercy, just a general good card to have a Black Pillow Fort kind of card to protect yourself from, from opponent's creatures because it's only damage that is dealt to you. Very nice. Lethal Vapors, there is no combo in here. I think the combo is with white, but this just disables creatures from being played at all since they just they are just destroyed. And the commander is indestructible, so you don't care really. And uh, do you know how many creatures you play? Like 10 maybe or so? Yeah, yeah. And, and most of them are not that valuable, either because they are cheap and then I just don't play them Mm -hmm. with Lethal Vapors out, or it's a card like Brash Taunter, spoilers, which is also just uh, indestructible. True. Very nice. And the dark side, you just get the treasures from and then you don't care if he sticks around or not and if he's destroyed. Yeah. And then, aha, what I forgot is that you have to skip a turn to destroy this one. Anyone can activate it. And in the best case, or normally, an opponent will skip a turn, which is great. So it gives you a turn more to build your board. Sometimes sometimes this card backfires because the table is then turning on you because you played <laughs> a very annoying card 
and someone says, oh, okay, I will sacrifice my next turn, but uh, you leave me alone because of that. And then people hit me in the face, but still a very fun card. And you don't see it that often. Yeah, that is true. That's true. So what does this card do? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Sure. Uh, it exiles up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, up to one target enchantment, up to one target planeswalker, and up to one target land. Mm -hmm. So every permanent type except battle, mm -hmm. and they get, I guess, polymorphed. Um, their owners uh, exile them, and they reveal from the top of their library until they hit the same card type and put them into play. Um, it's one of the ways I deal in this deck with enchantments and also I sometimes just polymorph my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I saw you do that, yeah. <laughs> and then you hope to get a bunch of value out of this. I also like that it is up to and doesn't force you to have all the targets. So even if you just, I mean it would be expensive, but if, even if you would just have to destroy one enchantment that is really annoying you, you could just cast it for the enchantment and I mean, you just said it, you can also target your own stuff, so normally you will find a land and probably an artifact and stuff. So that's really nice. I like it. Very interesting. Season of the Witch. That's a new card in your deck. Yeah, this is a card I'm testing out right now. I'm uh, looking forward uh, to it. Um, it's also anti-creature. Um, at the beginning of each player's turn, I guess it would be at the beginning of each player's upkeep mm -hmm. nowadays, if it would be reworded. Um, all untapped creatures that did not attack last turn but could have attacked are destroyed and in my upkeep I have to pay two life and uh, otherwise it will be sacrificed. Yeah, I'm, I'm hating creatures um, with this deck and this card is maybe fun. I'm trying it out. Uh, it helps with devotion. Indeed, yeah, it does. And yeah, it's, it's, it looks like a fun card and I will see where it takes me. Very nice. I do also like the fact that you have to pay life and that it's not damage, since this would kind of backfire if you double the damage, which is really nice. So that's that's interesting. And it's also kind of a board wipe for creatures or you're forcing them to attack. And it's really important that you have cards out like No Mercy, for example, because then they won't attack you and will they will attack each other. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah. And you also have a Mace of If if a big creature comes your way, so that's useful. Never count this towards lands. This does not give you mana as long as you don't have an Urbok out or so. Uh, so this one is in the removal pile. We got a last one standing, which is a fun board wipe, which lets one creature stay on the battlefield and the rest gets destroyed. If Mogus is a creature, you hope that it's just Mogus who stays on the battlefield. And otherwise, you hope it's just a Land of War Elf or so, right? Yeah. yeah. And also, it's cheap compared to a Damnation. True, true. Um, it's, it's one of the cheaper uh, board wipes, and it has a chaos element to it, which I really, uh, really like. Yeah, I agree. Got Chain Reaction here, deals X damage to each creature equal to the amount of creatures on the board. And with Damage Doublers, this deals even more damage. Getting rid normally of all the creatures when playing Damnation, Blasphemous Act, Rolling Earthquake, dealing X damage to each creature without horsemanship and each player. <laughs> I love it. Such an old card. And we have the Meat Hook Massacre, which also gets rid of indestructible creatures. Yes. Yeah. This card could potentially kill Morgus itself, um, but at Desperate, desperate times call for desperate uh, solutions. Um, it's one of the few cards that lets me gain life in this deck, mm -hmm. um, but there are other cards in my deck that prevent anyone from getting life, so sometimes this is uh, not even that good. You could make an argument for switching this out for Toxic Deluge maybe, mm -hmm. but one or two life gain sources can make a difference. And it's also an enchantment that helps with the devotion, so... That's on theme, I would say, also. Yes. Yeah. So we're hitting into the last part before we look at the lands. So I hope you enjoyed this video so far. Let us know in the comments below how you would build or are building or built your Mogus deck. We are in the damage pile now or rest of the cards, which we just didn't put into those. 
We have Maddening Hex, which got really expensive these days. I think it's played in Legacy also. This is a three mana enchantment. You curse an opponent, and whenever the enchanted player casts a non-creature spell, they roll a d6 and get dealt damage equal to the result of the die. And then it's attached to a random opponent, so this one never hits you, luckily. Yes, I'm always the controller. There was some confusion with this card when it came out, but it's very clearly in the rules. The controller of this card is always me, mm -hmm. and the opponent is always an opponent chosen at random, and it's one of my opponents. So it will never hit me. If I'm in the heads up with the last player, he will have to pay a d6 damage for every non-creature spell he casts. Yeah, this never leaves the, the player, the last player. That is uh, brutal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we get Witch and Witch is similar, but this one can go to you, back to you, right? Yes. Because they gain control of this of this exactly. enchantment. Yeah, so that's the difference. And players can't gain life, yeah. which is the most important uh, part of this card. It's also very fun and it's a to remember every player, ah, but you have to roll a dice who gets, or well, you have to choose at random, which we do with the dice, yeah. um, who gets the witch hunt. And people are always very filled with schadenfreude when uh, the witch hunt goes back to the Mogus player. <laughs> <laughs> and this was one of the reasons why you didn't include Fire Emancipation, right? That's correct. Because with, this one would deal 12 damage to yourself as well. It would deal 12 damage to me with Fiery Emancipation on the board. Yeah. But it wouldn't deal 12 damage to my opponents uh -huh. because Fiery Emancipation explicitly states that it only triples the damage from sources I control. Aha, uh -huh. and since you're losing control, yes. an opponent gains control to, this, uh, to yeah. them, they are not dealt 12 damage. Yeah, so keep that in mind when you put in cards like this or Fire Emancipation, because uh, this can backfire and probably already did. It That's why you removed the card. <laughs> so we got this curse here, which enchants one player and it stays there. Um, whenever they draw a card, they lose two life and you gain two life. And it even have, has madness with the uh, wheel effects. You can also cast it, which is also Nice, I guess. Yeah, I would say one third of the time I actually cast it after playing the wheel type effect. Mm. And this is specifically to hate on one player uh, who is the maybe... The blue one. <laughs> maybe the blue one. Maybe the blue one, maybe the one who played the first soul ring of the game. Mm. Um, someone who is ahead who needs his life to be a little bit um, taken to control. Yeah. Taken into control. And it's also one of the life gain cards. Very nice. I think this is a card not many people have seen yet. I think it's a little a little underplayed, even though it does quite some work with, with card draw players. And this one also helps. The Shieldred deals two damage to each player that draws a card, and you gain two life whenever you draw one. So this would deal four damage to the player that is enchanted, which is quite brutal. Yes, uh, it's sad that this card is so expensive. Um, if you have it included into your deck, it's by no means a necessary include. Yeah, we got Pyrohemia and I think, yeah, Pestilence is also in here. They have both the same effect, one for red and one for black. You have to sacrifice those enchantments if there is no creature in play. If we have the Devotion for Mogus, we never have to sacrifice them until Mogus is no longer a creature, if the rest is dead. And for one mana of uh, the color here, you deal one damage to each creature and each player. So this one could even kill players. Easily. Yeah. And you always keep control of the board, so the one ones probably you just kill for fun, and the rest if they get out of hand, probably. And it also helps with devotion, so that's nice. Yes. It has two, two pips in here. We got the Blood Chief Ascension, which is a wonderful one drop and luckily got reprinted recently at the beginning of the end step. If an opponent lost two life in any way, so damage dealt or losing life, um, it gets a quest counter on here, and if it has three or more counters on it... I would call it activated. I always say, oh, now my Blood Chief Ascension is online, um, and when from that point forward, every card that hits an enemy's graveyard drains them for two life and gives me two life. 
we see as well here this is not a damage card mm. um, it fits very neatly because mogus is dealing two damage which is exactly the threshold uh, mm -hmm. for the end step trigger very nice so uh, it can be just activated in one turn rotation yeah um, it's a very strong card it's a very hated card it gets removed fairly often but if it's not removed and you play a wheel then the enemy's life goes down very fast and children with a wheel by the way is also quite fun dealing 14 damage to each opponent and gaining 14 life uh, that happened um Cemetery Gatekeeper, this one exiles any card in a graveyard and when a player plays a card of the chosen type um, that player gets dealt two damage from Cemetery Gatekeeper. It is a symmetric effect so it also affects us which is fine I guess. Sometimes you have to take the good with the bad. Um, it's a strong two drop. Uh, you can get rid of fetch lands in your opponent's graveyard. Sometimes you get rid of key pieces in opponent's graveyards or you hit something that is an artifact and a an creature mm -hmm. uh, so you have dual type just a solid card for tomorrow yeah and maybe sometimes you just uh, have it for graveyard removal if there is a key card that someone wants to reanimate hopefully you can cast this before they get to it we have the dinosaur here that also forbids gaining life for players and whenever a creature comes into play, the controller or the the owner of the creature gets uh, dealt one damage by the dinosaur. And with doublers and triplers, that's more damage for more creatures. And I guess a lot of damage for people who play a lot of creature during one turn. So that's yes, nice. it's it's an absolutely um, hate for every token deck mm. and uh, plays lots of little tokens, white weeny deck types. Um, but the most important part about this card is uh, not allowing players to gain life. There are not that many cards in existence that do that. There are more cards in existence than I have in this deck, just because I don't own them. Yeah. Okay, we have a misprinted Mana Barbs. Um, this has a Setch Troll on it. I think it's only in, exists in German. I don't know why they did that. But the effect of this card is a 4-mana enchantment, and whenever a player taps a land, they get dealt 1 damage. So each land they tap, they get dealt 1 damage. And that is also symmetric, so you also get dealt damage. But um, why don't you care? <laughs> um, there's a good reason why I care. Firstly, um, only if you tap it for mana. So if mm -hmm. you tap a Maze of If to remove an attacking creature, you don't get dealt damage. Okay. Um, and also, I'm the one on the play when I get this into the uh, when I get this on the battlefield. So I tap out, play all the stuff I want to play on my turn, and the last thing I play is mana barbs. Mm. And then a whole turn rotation, people are angry and they are the first ones to take damage from it. Mm -hmm, true. Um, you can also yeah, you can also put your whole mana into your mana pool before you cast this yes. and use it after casting this. Yeah, that is okay. true. And we don't have a problem with taking the game slow. So that is fine. Um, we are defending ourselves with different cards. So even skipping a turn or two or playing very conservatively with our mana is fine. We have some mana rocks in our um, ramp pile. We have some treasures we can create. So there is possibility that we don't even get hurt that much from mm. this card. And we don't ramp lands. Yeah. So other maybe green players who have 20 lands out will get hurt significantly more than we do yeah very nice another card that prevents life gain right mm -hmm. yeah and at the beginning of each player's upkeep they get dealt two damage so that's just another mogus as an enchantment here and the brush taunter you already spoilered <laughs> so whenever it gets dealt damage you deal that damage to another target opponent as well. How do you deal the damage with Horde Wipes? Blasphemous Act, for example. And he's indestructible, by the way. Yeah. Yes, and, and you actually miss the key part, which is for free, for free mana and top, he fights another creature. Mm -hmm. Also, I think we haven't reached that uh, pile yet, but um, we have double uh, cards that deal double damage, or our sources deal double damage. So if my Bresh Taunter fights against my Mogus with a card uh, on the board that deals double damage, that means 
Uh, Brash Taunter is dealt not 7 damage, but 14 damage. And in return, he doesn't deal 14 damage to an opponent, he deals uh, 28. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that is impressive. So yeah. Yeah, okay, so for 3 mana you deal 28 damage to a player. If I have at least one card uh, on the board that uh, says that my damage is doubled. Yeah, yes. that, is, that is quite brutal. <laughs> This one is also a fun card. You make a lot of friends playing this card. Painful Quandaries? Yeah, I think that's it in English. Whenever an opponent, it's only for opponents, casts a spell, they either discard a card or lose five life. So this one does not uh, synergize with damage doublers, but it's still quite yucky to be dealt five damage or having to discard a card for each spell. Yes, this card hurts a lot. Uh, it's not popular to play against. I'm actually considering taking this card out of my deck because it's very obnoxious to play against and I still want my opponents to have fun and mm -hmm. discarding I don't think is a very fun mechanic so I'm considering taking this out um, but it fits the theme of draining my opponents faster than they drain me or I myself. Yeah, And then we have the damage doublers here. We have Solfim as well as the Dictate and the Furnace. They all deal double the damage. Except I think... for Solfim, Solfim yeah. only doubles my non-combat damage. Mm. So he's the best one out of those uh, three cards. Yeah. We talked about Fiery Emancipation. You could also talk about, uh, is this card called Aggravated Assault? I think I that mean... gives you extra combat stats. Mm. Oh yeah, you're right. There is a card that says your creatures deal double damage, which would harmonize with Mogus if he's a creature, but that's not good enough for me, uh, for this deck. So if you have the chance, get Zolfim on the board. He can get uh, an indestructible counter, so he's very hard to deal with, and only your damage gets doubled. And when you have two of these, or even three of these, on the board, the game is over very, very quick. Zolfim's activated ability is uh, one colorless and two Phyrexian red to discard two cards and put an indestructible counter on Zolfim. And you do this when before when when a, when a removal is being played on him either that yes. or at the end of a, a just before your turn he's kind of like having an opponent's uh, rhystic study on the board mm -hmm. you always keep your one yeah. colorless mana open yeah. to always have to respond uh, to discard two cards and give him indestructible yeah. uh, i hesitate to do it too early because if the next turn someone plays a farewell, then or mm -hmm. merciless eviction, uh, other exile cards, then then you pay two four life for four nothing. life for yeah, nothing. Yeah. So and people know that, so they won't waste their removal like their beast within on Solfim if I have two cards in my hand and one colorless open. Okay, and they all give like nice devotion here. Like this one gives you three devotion, the furnace, which is very yes. nice. Yeah. And we talked about Fiery Emancipation. Uh, we could include it into the stack and just deal with it that it has one bad interaction yeah. with one other card, which you could avoid by just not playing it. Um, actually, maybe I will do that. Okay, let's last look at the land pile. We're playing a whole bunch of lands that are giving us access to both mana. So we have the Blood Crypt here. The, I think, Tainted Peaks, I think it is in English. Uh, this one I don't know in English. Uh, this one flips to the other side for a red. So you get either or. We have the Luxury Suit, I think. Great Dual Land, a Sulphur Springs, I think it is. We have a Command Tower here, Black Cleaf Cliffs. Why did you include this one? Just for uh, more we, dual lands? Um, we have many like you call them pips, mm -hmm. um, we have to pay either a lot of red or a lot of black mana for our spells. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind waiting a turn to get this card out um, or to have it untap. So we need to have the most possible amounts of colored mana. That's, that's an interesting reason because I normally don't include any of these because most of the time they enter tapped but I've also seen you often have this card at turn one or two and you had it untapped, so that's that's kind of nice. We got the Temple for Scries. We got a Drang Skull Summit, some Midnight Hunt Land. Don't know what the English name is. Great card. We got a 
Graveyard removal as a land here. I think this should be included in all black decks, in my opinion. The fact that it enters the battlefield tapped is just so irrelevant. Yeah, the cost reward the effect. on this card yeah. is very, is very good. Yeah. Uh, unless you have to play it because ah, oh, I'm only one mana short for this or that yeah. play, uh, then you have to play a top land and remove non-existent graveyard, for example, which happens quite a lot. But we have two tutors in our deck, so if we are playing against a very aggressive graveyard deck, mm -hmm. we can tutor a Bajuka box just to exile yeah. a graveyard. Yeah, I also did that, so I agree. <laughs> Urborg to have black uh, available on all our lands, Fable Passage as a fetch, and then we have a bunch of basics. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen mountains, and eight swamps. Very nice. Anything else you want to add? Um, Did we forget anything? Because uh, you saw an Urbok, you could play a Cable Coffers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's that necessary. You could include it, especially if you play Tutors and play with Tutors. But we don't play cards like Exsanguinate or Torment of Hellfire mm -hmm. in this deck, which would fit theoretically, I guess. So you can go with a lot of ways in this deck. I hope you liked it. I, I also like that you are winning with less known cards rather than Exsanguinate or Torment of Hellfire, which you mentioned. You could obviously include them, but you don't have to. And there are a lot of interesting cards that just deal a whole bunch of damage that are so much more interesting to play rather than the standard cards that everyone plays to win the game. Yeah, I think it's, it's important if you're playing casual commander and not a competitive commander, um, you want to have everyone to have a good time. Uh, so you don't play too much stacks pieces, you don't play too much um, solitaire, we call it, if you play only with yourself. <laughs> uh, so this is a deck that is very fast, uh, you, your turns only last a couple of seconds, you don't have to think too much uh, about what you are doing. And like I said, the game can be over fairly quickly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing this deck with me. I enjoy playing against this deck, even though it does a whole bunch of damage all the time. It's one of my favorite decks that uh, you built ever, I think. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I hope you liked this kind of collaboration, kind of podcast -y video. If you have questions about the deck, what cards could you exclude to get some cheaper options, uh, I happily answer them in the comments or Mr. Cardboard Tutor will do that. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.